I, I, I really look to him, uh, you know, multiple, multiple times throughout the week. Um, he does a fantastic job covering that stuff in a way that I, I don't think I could do it any more justice than he does it, frankly. Um, and so I do tend to look for more fringe kind of topics. Um, and, you know, it, it's hard to say what exactly tips me off to something, but, you know, it, it requires a fair amount of reading into the stories because on the surface, like you said, it may not seem like a whole lot uh, up front, but – the closer you, you start to dig into the details, which requires reading a lot of, you know, news stories online of the exact same story. Yes. Uh, that you start to find little hidden nuggets, uh, and a lot of which, you know, you might refer to as twilight language, um, yeah. which is something that, uh, James Shelby Downard kind of came up with, um, and people like Lauren Coleman now kind of look at those things. So, you know, there might be a, a key word or a key phrase or a key name involved in a story that may have resonance um, on a more esoteric level. Mm. And so when when you come across one of those little details, it, it may – send up a red flag and so you, you may spend a little bit more time looking at the the details of the story and oftentimes those things start to just snowball it's, and it's like, the more you uh, i'll start to cut you off Tom, but I'm, I'm a reminder of that thing with uh, the um i think there was a murder in some somewhere and and a consequent suicide after that where it said in the news story that um the 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 main perpetrator as it were have uh, have uh, said is, is there no help for the widow's widow's son right that's that's a that's a key word right there or key phrase oh yeah <laughs> correct you know and um i you know i i don't know you know i don't want to get too you know caught up in it in terms of you know any personal contributions per se but i'm pretty sure that i was the first person to like write about that mm. <laughs> um when i first saw that story you know i i brought up the article about the details um you know within the hour that it had happened in the original um details of that story that was one of the very last things that was mentioned in the the article and i was just like dumbfounded quite frankly because it seemed like such a odd detail that that they really chose to include in their you know original story yes. uh, uh, cover, covering the event and you know not only was it the masonic distress call but the the note had been typed his entire like suicide note if you will mm -hmm. was typed and the the distress call the widow's son reference was handwritten scrawled at the bottom in, in handwriting mm -hmm. as well which okay. would which is an odd detail and i'm still not sure what what went down with that? That's a that story is uh, very strange. In the uh, if you go back and look at all the news reports as they were coming out over sub subsequent days, even um, there's a lot of inconsistencies in terms of how the timing of of these things. There's inconsistencies in terms of him uh, supposedly faxing into a local uh, television station his uh, suicide note mm -hmm. and then subsequently uh, calling the 911 and saying that he had come home and that his family had been killed. Hmm. 
whereas his uh, contact with the the news station, as I recall, like uh, he basically had said that he had he was had just killed his family. Um, mm. So there's some inconsistencies there, and then the ob- you know obviously the Masonic distress call. Uh, yes, I found very interesting. Um, in follow up to that, and I haven't really written about it since the initial stuff. I, I was able to determine on some actual Masonic websites that in their kind of comment sections, uh, actual Masons had been trying to investigate whether or not this guy was a member of any lodge. Mm. And the last details I saw was that they had um, had narrowed it down that he was in fact a Mason, not one of a uh, member of one of the bigger lodges, but that he he was indeed a Mason. Hmm. Um, which you know that the details of that, you know, I don't know what all that really means. I mean, it's obvious that the 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 man was in uh, a lot of financial troubles. Um, and and he lo- lost his job recently, I think. And yeah, both he and his wife had worked for Kaiser Permanente. Yeah, um, that's right. That's right. Hmm. And were apparently, according to Kaiser, uh, had been kind of falsifying some some personal details, um, and so they were being let go. Had been fired. Um, so there, you know, there's just a lot of strangeness to that story, and, and you know, the, the, most of these stories, frankly, a lot, a lot of the stories I cover, um, you know, you'll never know. We'll, we'll never know what the actual details and what actually happens with these things. Right. But more often than not, you know, if I cover them, there's usually because there's there's something. Not quite right there, you know. In the Masonic <laughs> right. connection with this story, particularly, I found uh, extremely interesting. Right, but is, uh, isn't this you know, like I said? Hmm? Go, go ahead. No, I just want to say, isn't it also about kind of building up, um, or, or building slowly up a, a, an image of all these things that aren't right? Meaning that the more you pay attention to them, the, the easier they will become to spot the next time uh, around. It's almost like there's a hidden connection between all these things in a, in a weird kind of way but, but what happens is that you, uh, you build up and you become more uh, savvy to spot these kind of things uh, would you say that's right Todd? Uh, I think that's certainly the case uh, without a doubt and I think that's part of the reason why um, myself and others that are kind of dealing with these similar topics are overwhelmed at times, uh, because it's just, it becomes one one thing after another. You know, the, even with this situation, like that same uh, day, I think I think it was either that day or the day after that. You know, Kaiser Permanente was involved with the the birthing of these octuplets, <laughs> and so one piece connects to another piece. Yes. I, I don't claim to have any any idea what all these things necessarily mean at the end of the day. I, I don't I don't have any inside knowledge. I don't have any inside contacts or anything else. But the the trail, if you will, uh, is fascinating. Yes, and it, and it is definitely pointing to something. It, it is it is taking me on a path as much as I'm taking my readers on a path. And so it kind of lays itself out to me at times. You know, I don't even have to dig that much usually. They just kind of appear, and then they usually appear in frequency. And they're connected One connection to it. Yes, one connection to another over a long period of time in some cases – and over a short period of time, in other cases, yes. Uh, and I and I just find that fascinating. You know, I I, I don't know what it means. I I don't know what it's signaling towards. But if nothing else, it's signaling to me to pay attention. <laughs> That's interesting. And and you said that they were. This is uh, the Kaiser Permanente that you mentioned. That's a. Uh, it's a, it's a what it say it's a 
foundation as a health plan, basically, right? Or, or it's a consortium. Yeah, of yeah, basically, I think you know it's a giant health consortium. Yes. Uh, which, you know, I, I think that they they've gotten into the HMO aspect, but I, I think they deal with all things from insurance to actual health health care. Uh, you know, it's kind of they tie all, every aspect of health into one big conglomeration. You know, probably even pharmaceuticals, everything. Mm. Yeah, you know, so they they're probably one of the biggest health organizations in the world, probably. Mm. And so, so Kaiser was in, involved in in uh, helping to deliver these octopus, which kind of loosely leads us into this area of of the set of twins, because I think in in these octopus there were uh, two sets of twins, weren't that right, or was it only one set of twins? Um, with the the gentleman who who killed his family and himself, he had two sets of twins in his family. Ah, oh, okay, that was it. All It's, right, okay. Yeah, he he. That's how not only you know that story relates. Not only did did he and his wife both work for Kaiser Permanente, they had two sets of twins. And then the day that that happened, or that week that that happened, Kaiser was in the news with the, the birth of those octuplets. And I haven't really followed the octuplet story much further, but that, that story's gotten even stranger uh, <laughs> over the past week or two. Because um, that, that woman... Uh, had six previous kids prior to the birth of these octuplets. Yeah, yeah. And now, right. and, that, and now we're finding out all this stuff about this woman. Uh, I, I haven't even checked into it. I, I noticed something the other day about there's some weird connection that she has with Angelina Jolie or something. And I, I, I haven't, like I said, I haven't looked into that, so I don't want to go too much into it. But right, right. Um, I, I did notice that there was something going on that had to do with Angelina Jolie, which I find strange. Um, and so when I was looking at that stuff, I, I did start to notice that there was a number of uh, celebrities that, that are also uh, very much entrenched into the whole twin births that there are, to me, you know, I don't know if the numbers necessarily bear it out percentage-wise across the globe, mm -hmm. but it seemed to me that there are a large number of uh, people that are celebrities or in the entertainment field that are either twins themselves or give birth to twins. I found, I found that interesting. Yes, and, and, and there is um, very another kind of weird, interesting news story that I know that you also picked up on, and that was the uh, the story about the twins and the and the city in uh, was it Argentina, uh, you know, with possible connection to uh, some kind of genetic experimentation that had been going on by by Mengele. You know, that the story goes that through the rat lines, a lot of Germans managed to escape to South America and set up their little you know colonies, as it were, over there. Um, And this this news story described that there was in one city, uh, you know, very many twins being born, uh, kind of off the chart if you compare it to other regions and cities. And and of course the whole Kaiser story kind of connects in with the not Nazi story as well, if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, that, I mean that was de that was definitely it. And you know the thing was is that all these stories were coming out simultaneously. Yeah. You know, it'd be one thing if if they were spaced out over six months or you know even a few months but with with these kind of topics you know part of why it's so fascinating to me is because we're we're seeing them just come out one after the other and the, and they all have some connection to one another in some form or fashion and so yeah that story um was in brazil some small brazil that's right Yeah. Community in Brazil, which yeah, directly connected with Mengele, hmm. and you know, 